cruising your way on this episode of Off 90. Drama unfolds where the Root River bends. Step behind the scenes of Lanesboro's Common Wheel Theater. It's all just ahead, Off 90. Hi, I'm Barbara Keith. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Off 90. Professional quality productions in the heart of bluff country. Lanesboro's Common Wheel Theater has been bringing plays to life since 1989. And even though they're not located in an urban center, the Common Wheel is well known for a high standard of excellence. It's also home to a number of professional actors from around the country. So sit back and enjoy as we dim the lights. We are a professional regional theater in a small town. It's, it's a very tough business to be in. Now, we've been very successful, and yet it's a struggle every year. Uh, we say that if you give us two hours, we'll affect you in some way. We'll either make you laugh, we'll challenge you, we might make you think, we might make you cry, but we will take you out of your existence for a couple of hours and with our story show you uh, an aspect of humanity you may not have thought about prior to coming. Every company member really puts forward between 40 and 80 hours of work in a given week, and that's across the board. Do you have any Cote d'Ivoire? Perfume. No powder? It's certainly not. It's something that we love, but we recognize that that love brings sacrifice, and it's that sacrifice as well as the generosity of people who support the theater that makes it possible. May I recommend the large one, madam? It's more than twice the amount at quite a saving. You'll fare much better with the larger size, madam. Young man. I am so sorry, madam. Will there be anything else? Show me. So there are lots of props and pretty costumes and a set behind me. It's the actor and the transformative power of the actor that we try to bring to performance and to our audience. And over time, the audience has grown to really accept this aesthetic and embrace it really fully. It's been great. Uh, will you please pay the cashier, madam, and thank you so much for your understanding. There's Parfumerie. Parfumery, parfumery, and uh, parfumery. <laughs> Steph, maybe we only need a bow on this end. This play is very seldom done. I believe this may be the ninth or tenth production in North America, including Canada. When you turn to go the first time, turn downstage, not upstage. There are multiple uh, story levels uh, within the show, but the main story is uh, two shop clerks who bicker and argue and they just can't stand each other, and it turns out that for a year and a half they've been corresponding, writing anonymous love letters to one another. Box 520. The other end of the spectrum, an older gentleman who runs the shop, who's been married for years, who who may or may not be a workaholic, who may be married to his job, and he finds out his younger wife is having an affair. John, I'm just trying to help! Like you've been helping with my wife! Get out, you little light! Get out of my sight! Get out of here before I kill you! So we watch as the younger lovers discover who they are and discover their brand new love for each other. Uh, and as we watch that, we see the older, more established love that is now going through trauma and tumult, and how these two work it through, and then what they bring and what they teach to the other. I miss her, George. I really love this play. I only made remarks about your feet once, and it was just in jest. Well, there's not much I can do about my feet, you know, any more than you can do something about your, I don't know, no. <laughs> In some ways we're different, in some ways we're similar. She's a lot more, um, she, she, she's a lot more hesitant to call people out and she's really more hesitant to get angry than I would be at some of the things that happened to her. Not that I'm an angry person, but 
Um, she, I'm just more, I'm a confident woman in 2011, and this is a woman who's living in 1937. So gender roles are totally kind of different, and how people operate in society is different at that time. She just wants to do her best, and she wants to get all of her work done, and she wants to like check everything off her list in a proper way. And so there have been, it's been interesting to find ways that we are similar and ways that we are different. Let's do this. Let's go get in the costume. Let's preset your quick changes if you have any. Um, and you do. Well, this is a wonderful opportunity, the Commonweal Theater, being a resident ensemble. It's a, it's a chance to kind of be in one place and work with a group of people over a long period of time as opposed to kind of uh, being in a larger city where maybe you're constantly searching for the next, uh, for the next job. I really fell into this uh, uh, wonderful opportunity. I came here thinking it was just another theater in another town and I'd be here for a little bit and I would, uh, and I would move on. Now it is middle of winter, I'm guessing long johns or yeah, I mean, I have, a, I have a home here. My wife, uh, who works for the company, uh, we met here and married and we have a young son who's at home right now and it's, it's kind of a, as actors, they tell you you can't have those those things because you have to move around so much, you have to make so many sacrifices for your career. But this has proven to be a, a such a special community, such a special theater company that I've been able to have those things that you say you can't have. Um, at seven, we're going to do a dress tonight. Um, we're going to start probably with working a few of the props challenges um, and we'll do we'll look at costumes and I don't think we'll start a run much before eight so thanks have a good dinner break thank thanks. you have been accused of uh, having really high standards uh, particularly of myself all right let's strike it and try it again sorry guys can I see you Malia? I feel Again, going back to that idea that we are a vital part of the community, that there's never a minute or a show or a performance that we can afford to half-ass, for lack of a better word. All right, let's go to places that have already. Thank you, places. 70% of the people who've gone through our apprenticeship program are engaged in professional theater uh, across the country. Yeah, you guys, that actually works. Uh, the model, I think, is uh, very much uh, driven from my concept of how theater should function. That is a resident ensemble, people working with each other over long periods of time, developing a skill set, developing a company-wide aesthetic, a style, if you will, and totally based in the community and responding to the community in the region in which we live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for joining us here at the Commonweal Theater for tonight's performance of Parfumery. I do have a couple of I think it's our willingness to embrace the notion of theater as service and theater as, uh, as uh, giving and connecting. Eloise. <laughs> And I have returned his love in kind. <laughs> Loved Cressida. <laughs> More than Abelard loved Heloise. <laughs> and I have returned his love in kind. My, uh, my uh, body kind of fills with a little bit of pride and uh, and there is a, a deeply satisfying emotional response, not when the production starts, but at the end of an evening when an audience is signaling with their uh, applause or their laughter or their conversation, the fact that they've spent the two hours and that it was worthwhile fills me with tremendous satisfaction. <laughs>